Uh, but she's never going to make it in Hollywood. <laughs> Hi folks, Matt from uh, Miracle Mountain again. Excited to continue to talk and share some things with you from uh, Psalm chapter 63. Just some words of encouragement as we walk down through this passage and continue to learn about God, right? So we learn about David in this passage, but that's not the goal. The goal isn't to discover David. <laughs> the goal is to discover God as he reveals himself. More about the chicken in a minute. Uh, so David has just talked about what he meditates on, what he thinks about. And uh, this reminds me of um, one of my favorite hymns, Be Thou My Vision, which says, um, Thou my best thought by day and by night. And then David's going to go on and he's going to say, Because you have been my help, acknowledging God as his help. Therefore, under the shadow of your wings, I will rejoice. David understands this truth, um, which I, I don't think I did as a kid. Uh, and that is... Uh, when it comes to things like the story of David and Goliath, I, I love the story of David and Goliath. I really do. I remember as a kid, uh, my mom taught, I think they were called five-day clubs with uh, CEF, Child Evangelism Fellowship. So we would go into neighborhoods and my mom would share Christ. And we had something that was absolutely amazing that my mom used. I mean, it was so cool. It's called flannel graph. <laughs> and, and she would use these images, these pictures, and tell the stories from the Old Testament or the New Testament. And, and I always remembered, the, the, I can still picture in my head, the, my mind, uh, the story of David and Goliath and David hurtling that stone. And my takeaway as a kid was, man, I want to be like David. I mean, because obviously David's the guy. And, and that's, that's not a bad thing to aspire to. But what David's acknowledged here in Psalm chapter 63 is that the hero of David and Goliath is not David. The hero of David and Goliath is God. And David knows that. That's why he says, because you have been my help. Therefore, under the shadow of your wings, I will rejoice. Now, some of you are wondering why I'm holding a chicken. And I, to that, want to respond by saying, I'm glad you asked. <laughs> because that's what David uses as an illustration. It's used other places in the Old Testament too. This idea of being under the shadow of a wing, the protection, the place of refuge. I have always loved farm animals. And um, I did 4-H when I was in um, school. And I did a chicken project in 4-H. And this is a really tough time of year for me because when I go into tractor supply, all those chicks in there are saying, Matt, take me home, take me home. My wife continues to be strong and remind me that we don't need chickens, though I think I may. I think I may need chickens. I've always really liked chickens. And uh, we raised all kinds of different chickens. This is a barred rock. Uh, we raised um, oracanas. We had silver lace wine dots, all, all kinds of different kinds of chickens. But when we moved to Virginia, when I was eight, folks in our church gave me a pair of chickens. And I think it was just a really wonderful gesture on their part just to make me feel uh, at home. And uh, it, was a, it was a rooster and a hen, and they, I named them Henry and Henrietta. And they were, they were really, I mean, they just took care of themselves. They were really very self-sufficient, low maintenance. Um, we had them for years. And uh, it, was like, it was like a glorified Easter egg hunt every time you went looking for eggs. Because they, she would, Henrietta would lay them just all over the place. Well, one day, Henrietta laid a whole bunch in one spot. Or she started collecting them all in one spot, actually. And, uh, and she hatched out a, a set of chicks. And I thought that was the coolest thing ever. And uh, I remember the one day... I was down uh, weeding in the garden and Henrietta showed up with their chicks and, and the, the crows would actually come around and they would try to steal Henrietta's chicks. And every time the crows would show up, she would puff up really big and she would call her chicks and they would come and they would ru run underneath, underneath her and, and hide. So one day when the crows showed up, when I was weeding in the garden, I saw that whole animal planet uh, situation going down. And sure enough, Henrietta did what Henrietta always did. She puffed up, she called those chicks and they came ran, running and hid underneath her, all, all but one. One ran into the tall grass on the side of the garden and a crow swooped down and, and grabbed that chick. She launched and she hit this crow and knocked that chick free of that crow and, uh, and when it fell to the ground, she hit the ground too, and she puffed up, and she called those chicks. And sure enough, all those chicks, including that one, came running hard to get underneath 
to get underneath their mom because they knew that's where the refuge was. They were, knew that's where the protection was. When I shared with my dog uh, a little bit ago, we talked about Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 and, and, and not seeking things just because it makes sense to us, but seeking things because it's, it's what's true or what's right before God, what he would ask us to do. In fact, the psalmist in Psalm chapter 91, Moses, uh, is, who's attributed to, to writing Psalm 91, says this. He says, He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge, my fortress, uh, my God. In Him will I trust. Not that God provides a refuge, but God is the refuge. David understood that. He understood that under the shadow of God's wing, there he could rejoice. And as we go through a time like we're going through now, a time of challenge, a time of lots of questions, um, may we be found faithful in remembering who it is who's the hero of our story and also where we're to run when crisis strikes. Mm-hmm.